Tensions seem to have subsided between India and Pakistan, but one of the oldest international conflicts in modern history is far from over. To recap, on the 14th of February, a 20-year-old drove an SUV laden with explosives into a convoy of Indian paramilitaries, killing at least 40. Responsibility was claimed by Jaish al Mohammed, a militant group operating in Pakistan whose leader, Masood Azhar, lives freely in the country. Kashmir is a territory claimed by India in its entirety, partly held by Pakistan and with a population that increasingly demands self-determination which could mean independence from both. India responded to the attack with a, quote, surgical airstrike that, according to Reuters, appeared to mainly damage some trees and rocks. It also sent 10,000 paramilitaries to the region, adding to the some half a million who were already there. Throughout all of this, the flames of anger were fanned by television news channels. Primetime news anchors in India engaged in hysterical shouting matches rather than anything resembling actual news. Bollywood actors added to the jingoism on Twitter. Those calling for peace and dialogue, or even an investigation into the attack before any military action was taken, were vilified as anti-national. Pakistani media too has also been banging the war drums. India and Pakistan are no strangers to sabre rattling, and they usually pull back from the brink. But they have gone to war three times, and most importantly, both countries own nuclear weapons, and neither are signatories to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty or the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, despite the UN asking them to do so. That's why peaceful diplomacy here is key, and it's already played a role in de-escalating the situation. After the India's air attacks, Pakistan shot down an Indian Air Force jet, but Prime Minister Imran Khan, in a self-declared peace gesture, swiftly released the captured Indian pilot. With India gearing up for general elections, this all presents an opportunity for Prime Minister Narendra Modi to play the role of strongman. State elections in December last year didn't go to plan, with his right-wing BJP party defeated in three strongholds. Dissatisfaction with the economy is high, particularly in rural areas where wage growth has slowed and thousands of farmers have been driven to suicide. So, Modi will ride this for all that it's worth. In Pakistan, Imran Khan is playing the conciliatory role, calling for peace, denying that the car bomb had been planned on Pakistani soil, but also saying that he would be compelled to retaliate to any Indian aggression. That last bit plays very nicely with the Pakistani army, who are the ultimate kingmakers in the country. Meanwhile, those actually living in Kashmir are erased from view. Kashmiris have suffered occupation, state violence and extremism for decades. Their political interests and desires are always ignored, as the region remains a pawn between competing nationalisms.